Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're going to take a look at the S&P 500 return on investment after yield curve inversion. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, we have spoken somewhat frequently about the yield curve and how it is useful in understanding macroeconomic conditions. And right now, you will see, again, that the yield curve does, in fact, remain inverted. And it has been inverted for quite some time. We can scroll back the clock here and see that it really started to become, at least parts of it, became started to become inverted as, as early as late 2022. And, of course, it's been inverted more or less ever since. If you were to get a, go back in time and find other examples where we had yield curve inversion, there was a period before the 2007 recession uh, or the 2008-2009 recession where we had yield curve inversion. Uh, there was a period before the dot-com recession that we had yield curve inversion. And then also going back to, to the 1990s. Um, we don't actually have it on here, but this was the, the recession. And then, of course, just before it, we had an inverted yield curve. So one of the things that I, I think it's important to remind ourselves of is that unlike, you know, things like cryptocurrency, the macro stuff can take a very long time to play out. I mean, sometimes it can take years for it to ultimately play out. Again, if you were to go back to 2007, we had an inverted yield curve and the market didn't really start to get, you know, pretty nasty until a year or two later, you know, a year, year and a half later. So again, this stuff can take quite a long period of time. Now, to visualize yield curve inversions, you, of course, can also pick out two specific time frames and compare them. For instance, when, when the economy is, is healthy, you would argue that, you know, lower duration treasuries would yield less than than longer duration treasuries but when you're when the economy is is kind of sick you'll often see things like where the three month is is providing a better um, yield at least annualized than than say something like the 10-year so what we're going to look at are treasury yield spreads okay so this is the spread of the 10-year and the three month and again as you can see normally during the inversion process we are not in a recession, right? That's not typically what we see during the inversion. It's not to say that it can't ever happen, like you can see from the 1980s, but oftentimes, especially when you go into an inversion, you're not in a recession. In fact, if someone just told you in the future, some random date in the future that, hey, on this date in this year, we're gonna see we're gonna we're gonna see the three month invert the 10 year, and they asked you, do you think we're going to be in a recession when that occurs? you're probably better off answering no. Because again, normally when we become, when it becomes inverted, you're not in a recession. And it can take quite some time for us to actually get to the uninversion process. To give you an example, in 2000, uh, the dot, you know, just before the dot-com crash in, in the summer, you can see that we had an inverted yield curve, but it didn't, we didn't become uninverted, right? Until about, what, six months later or so? It was longer during the financial crisis. We had an inversion back over here in July 2006. The market kept pushing higher for basically another year or maybe slightly more, maybe about 14 months before it actually topped out. Now, just because it had this rally right here during the inversion process did not mean that the market was immune to, to what could theoretically occur after it, right? I mean, and, and sort of zooming out here, even though we became inverted here, the market rallied for you know well over a year, and we still eventually took out that entire rally. It just took a long time to do so, right? It took a long time to do so. And remember that the markets will make fools of both sides, right? In 2022, we made uh, the market sort of um, made a joke of, of the bulls. In 2023, so far, it's more or less made a joke of the bears. And, and this is what the market does, right? It's what the market does. But you can see that even in this yield curve inversion, even though we still slightly went higher, eventually the market did, did roll over. And I think the bigger question is, is, well, how long could this actually take? I mean, you know, the process of the inversion of the three-month and the 10-year 
Um, we, we've seen it. We, we've seen it last a few months. Over here, by the way, if you're curious, from inversion to uninversion, it was almost it was about a year. At least once it was sustained, about a year. And for this cycle, we didn't get our inversion of the three month and the ten year uh, really until October of 2022. So, you know, we're only a few months away, right? July, August, September, October, just four months from now, it will have been an entire year since we saw the three month and the 10, the, and the 10 year experience that inversion. That's nothing out of the ordinary. It's not, right? And history shows us that the S&P, you know, will climb the wall of worry. It can for some time but you still have to deal with the eventual resolution of the yield curve, right? Whether it happens three months from now, six months from now, nine months or 12 months, it's really hard to know. It really is. And you know, you're not going to find a more concrete answer from me, right? It's hard to know exactly when the uninversion process will take place. If you're to go look at well, what the bond market is predicting, they're constantly changing their minds. Only you know, at the beginning of this year, the market was pricing in rate cuts as early as now as early as June or July. And now the, the the bond market is basically saying there's not going to be any rate cuts until 2024. The Fed, you know, at this meeting last week, Powell said they don't envision rate cuts until for two years. So again, there does seem to be a, fair, uh, you know, a fairly strong disconnect between what's going on uh, over with the Fed, over at the Fed and what the, what the bond market thinks. And of course, the S&P, just can, has it has and, and continues to to sort of just climb the wall of worry. Okay. Now at some point we're going to likely see this uninvert, right? And if you zoom into the uninversion process, right? So like in the dot com crash, the uninversion process, the S and P was already had already rolled over. During this uninversion process, the S and P did continue to climb up just a little bit more. And during this uninversion process back over here you can see that the S&P climbed up just a little bit more. But in all three cases, we did eventually go into a recession on the other side of it, okay? And you can look at the spread on the 10-year and the two-year as well, and, and that might be, you know, informative too. You know, we've, we've been, this one's been inverted even longer, right? Going all the way back to July of 2022. So the two-year and the 10-year have been inverted for almost a year already and they had a brief inversion as early as april of 2022 but it wasn't sustained until july is this out of the ordinary not really right i mean over here we had an inversion we briefly popped back above it but from this first inversion you know like in late 2005 we didn't come out of this until early 2007. so again some sometimes this you know the the inversion process the inversion the, the amount of time that we see the yield curve inverted can last over a year, right? Sometimes even longer, a year and a half, or sometimes even longer than that. So we have to be aware of this of this potential reality. And even during the 1980s, you know, we were inverted for for quite a long period of time. And you know, eventually, eventually we got you know we, we saw an uninversion, and and of course during this process we ultimately did go into a recession. You could argue that during periods of high inflation, we are more likely to go into a recession before it uninverts. And the reason why the reason for that could be due to, you know, a, a more um, a, a more hawkish Fed, right, more resistant to wanting to cut rates because of high inflation. And so they might just stay the course a bit longer than they otherwise would have. So there are, of course, periods where you can see a recession during an inversion. But what you will often find is that the time at the time in which the the curve does become inverted, right? When the two year inverts the ten year, you're often not looking at a recession at that time. It doesn't mean that you can't go into one at some point during the inversion. But oftentimes, when you're not experiencing high inflation you will see a recession come after the uninversion. And then sometimes when you're experiencing high inflation, the recession can come still while the yield, still while the yield curve is in fact inverted. But I, th I thought it would be interesting to sort of plot out here how the S&P has performed uh, after yield curve inversion, right? Doesn't that seem like a useful exercise? So just algorithmically, if you were to go back for several decades, you know, going back to the early 1980s, 
and just sort of plot out what the S&P does after an inverted yield curve of more than like just like a day. It has to be inverted for a few days. If it's just like a single day, we throw it out. This is what you ultimately get. So this is the S&P 500 ROI to low after yield curve inversion. And if we ignore the current one, this is what it normally looks like, right? So normally you, you, you can get a rally after it, but eventually we do see it typically roll over. Uh, this was the dot-com crash over here. This was the financial crisis. This was 1989. You can see the 1989 um, rallied on up uh, you know, to a pretty nice level, uh, you know, over 1x um, or over over basically where it become, became inverted, right? So like it didn't just go down the minute that the yield curve inverted. It actually went up for uh, a while and, and stayed, as, stayed above one for as long as, you know, about two thirds of a year or so before it ultimately came back down. Now, if you overlay the current cycle, you can see that we've outperformed even the most optimistic case that we've had in the past, which was, I believe, 1989. So if you were to throw on here, uh, let me find the right one because there were several, several of them. So 1989, and then I want to overlay the current one, right? So this is an example where the market rallied and it still eventually rolled over, um, you know, once once things got got bad enough. I do think that it's important to consider just the longevity of of you know of this process, right? Like just how long it can take. And it can take a really long time for this to play out. Now, arguably, you could say, well, is this time different? Normally, going down that path is a fairly dangerous path to go down because normally it's not different, right? Sometimes the amount of time it takes uh, is, is different, right? Normally that's different, but the, the end result is usually not different. And so I guess the question is, is, well, how long can can this go on until it, it finally rolls over? And history shows us that um, at this point, you know, we've outperformed, at least going back to the early 1980s, we've outperformed all of those. Now, there are some unprecedented events this business cycle, for instance, the Fed printing six trillion dollars. Also, do note that we did have um, you know, a, a fairly long downturn in the S&P 500 just before, um, or, or right, or, you know, just before we, we got into some of this inversion, inversion process. But at the end of the day, you know, we still have to eventually come to terms with the uninversion process. And, you know, it's hard to say exactly how high equities can rally until that time. I will be completely honest and say that they've gone higher than I thought they would. Okay. Um, they have. I, I, I didn't really think they would they would go this high, but they have. And and here we are. Uh, so we need to we need to be aware of of how equity markets can, in fact, do this. Uh, just to give you kind of an example here. I was looking at this earlier. Um, uh, the Russell 2000, you know, at least last cycle, we, we put in a low in 2018 and then we rallied even through the yield curve inversion and even after it, it inverted. Uh, or after it uninverted, and then it still ended up putting in a new low. We actually saw something similar in 2014. We didn't have an inverted yield curve, but we put in a low in the in sort of the midterm year. We rallied and then put in a lower low in the presidential election year. Um, so it, it's interesting to see if, if something like that would play out, where it, it you know it, it rallies and then eventually puts in a new low, uh, maybe maybe sometime early next year or or later on this year. But I did think that this was a, an interesting concept, sort of plot out the ROI. Uh, too low after yield curve inversion. And do note that this 2022 one and 2023 one is assuming uh, that the low is still to come, right? I mean, all these other ones, we have the advantage of hindsight where we can look to see did the low come later or did it not. During this process, we don't actually know. For instance, if the S&P does eventually drop, but it puts in, say, a higher low, then the low would have already happened. If it puts in a lower low, then it makes sense to continue plotting this. But at this point, right, it's still too early on in the process to, to fully know why right? we just simply cannot know at this time. And we can also plot this for, you know, ROI to low after, say, the, the inversion of, of the two year and the 10 year and see what that looks like. And, you know, from this process, what's going on right now doesn't really look that out of the ordinary. Uh, with that said, it still has rallied longer 
at this point in time than all these other cycles going back to the late 1970s. There was one, one cycle, though, that actually had a, that topped out just north of where it is today, although it, it topped out a lot earlier, right? It still, it, it still eventually topped out, and I'm sure you can guess which one that was. It was, of course, 2019, right? So in 2019, if we take a, a closer look at this, you can see that it ultimately rallied um, a fairly significant amount after the inversion of the two-year and the 10-year, and it, it continued to rally even after the yield curve uninverted. But and then at some point, we got the pandemic, and then, and then sort of the bottom fell out, right? So a lot of things to consider here. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the content. If you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Again, you can check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium, and, and you can get access to charts like this. So make sure you check, out that, check that out. Links in the description below. See you guys next time. Bye.